rest of the season. We've got plenty more. Chapman, as this game goes on, a two-sport star at Georgia. We'll tell you all about that as we get deeper into this game. So Georgia gets tip three right off the bat, and that is buried by Gabby Conley. It's a 32% three-point shooter, but she leads the team in scoring at 12 and a half, and she knocks down the first shot. Tony Taylor concerned about how they handle the Kentucky pressure. Not bad on that possession. Serena Haynes gets knocked to the floor, but she gets back up. Adi Galibo inside, misses the layup, turn around, and she puts it back up and in. Veteran move from the veteran, Jeff, didn't give up on it. Tell you what, Dick, that's been one of the problems with her this entire season, is missing those easy oh. shots. Yeah, that's mad, isn't it? Yes, it is. And for us, Matthew yeah. Williams like for her and Matthew Mitchell. But she never stops working. She's always there. Georgia's had a problem scoring this year, but on their first possession, only Gabby Conley hits that three, so that's huge for them. Here's Danny with a little jumper in the lane. Eight-footer is short, down bounce and goes. Stady is the kind of post player, Jeff, as you know, who gives Kentucky trouble. She's big, she's physical, and that last shot now was standing pretty good touch inside. I'll tell you what, Dick, that's got to be her sweet spot, though. I mean, that's what, eight to ten feet from yeah. the basket? I think there would be problems here. It's Audrey Galibo on a nice back cut. She lays it up and in, so she's got the first four points for the Cavs. Nobody rotated for Georgia State. He looked at one of her teammates and said, where were you? She came out to help, and there was nobody home. So here's Paul at the free throw line. A nice little fake, but Kiki McKinney is there to knock that out of bounds with the block. That's impressive because she stayed clean, didn't use the body, went straight up, could have picked up a cheap foul, but instead played defensively. Driving the baseline, went up and under. Oh, Conley misses the bunny inside. As I said earlier, they've had some problems this year scoring. 11 times they've been held to single digits in a quarter. 11 times. So they've gone through some scoring droughts. Sabrina Haynes open from the three-point line in and out. Boy, that would have been a big bucket there. Chapman right side pitches off the backside. Howard with the block, but they're going to say that Ryan Howard got her on the hand. Now she's got to play almost the entire game. Short one foul. I hate early fouls. So this is Caldwell that'll be heading to the free throw line. Maya Caldwell, a 81% free throw shooter. And that is one thing that Georgia does very well. As a team, 74% from the charity to strike. So you keep them off the line. She knocks them both down, barely moving the nets as they fall through. 5 4, Georgia leads it early in this one. Jada Roper, one of the seniors. To Haynes, one of the other seniors on this team. One of the best players in the nation. Ryan Howard drives into the paint. No foul call, misses the shot. Boy, it's kind of tough for Ryan in there playing with just one hand, isn't it? Yeah, she's got to guard it, Jeff, but she can't give up anything to Georgia. Nice overplay there, but nice play by Paul to get that off the foot of McKinney out of bounds. It will stay Georgia basketball. And again, a heads up play, moved her feet, avoided the foul. Yep, we're going to say she walked, Paul took an extra step as she got ready to take off, but really nice defense that time by Anya Galibo. Open three for Haynes from the corner, that's a little too hard, but Roper claims the rebound. A shot clock for the Cats, remember it resets to 20 on a missed shot. Roper goes inside, says, ooh, that's one tall young lady in there. Howard misses, a little hard on that jumper. Again, one of the big keys to this game is rebounding. Georgia out-rebounds their opponent. They have been very successful this year, Dick. 17 times they've out-rebounded their opponent. They're 13-4 in those games. It's the kind of toughness that Joni Taylor looks for in this team. That's what kind of player she was at Alabama. What a nice wow. move there, and Anya Galibo is right to the basket, goes Chloe Chapman. A little bit of a mismatch in the quickness department there.
to man to man. Step back three on the way, and Ryan Howard knocks that down and tie the game. Chloe Chapman with a short straw, Jeff, having to guard Ryan Howard. I guess they'll mix it up. Bobby Galiba with the rebound. So. Early offense for Georgia, at least that's what they're yep. looking for against this Kentucky but that, I, that helps Kentucky because Wildcats aren't quite as big as Georgia opens a rebounding lane. How about Kiki McKinney? She can step out and hit a little jumper. Three-pointer for McKinney. 38% on the season from beyond the arc for McKinney. Kentucky in that tight defense. Anya Galibo getting help from Kiki McKinney. Now they double team, pressure the ball. Well, that's just great ball movement by Georgia. And again, handling Kentucky's pressure well, not panicking. And they run into trouble on the sideline. Little give and go. Anya Galibo with the left hand just can't get it to go. What were you saying? Mm. Well, we'll fire that three air ball. This is everything. And Howard behind her back and tries to get it to the right hand. Andy Galibio drives into the paint, picks up her dribble. Inside of five minutes to play here in the first quarter. It's been a very brisk pace so far. And as you said, good scoring, 10 to nine, and kindly called for a foul. 25 feet away from the basket. That's not where you want to foul somebody. With six seconds left on the shot clock, a bailout foul. Well, the Cats have been hot from beyond the arc, and they have the lead 10 to 9 over the Bulldogs. 442 left in the first quarter. Yeah. Same size, same physicality. Now you've got two great pieces to work around next season. Blair Green into the game. She fires it over and knocks it down. Instant offense. Hasn't even broken a sweat. Boy, one thing I've noticed, uh, and, and this has been of late, Blair seems to have, have changed her body a little bit. She looks a lot more athletic on the court, a little quicker, thinner. And it's helped that jumper was nothing so but much, it. So much more confidence compared to last year. There she is. I'll tell you, Stady, you mentioned that good touch. Yeah, if she gets the ball clean down there, it's not a whole lot you can do. This is Patterson in the game. She came out of high school a couple of years ago, the number one point guard in the country. We transferred in from Texas to the University of Kentucky. Missed first part of the season. Another missed. But a great play by Pascal to get in front of Stady. Stady leading the break. I was going to say, I'm not sure you want to pass through a big going down the court, but she was out front of everyone. But Patterson's got all kind of quicks on the outside. Has some big games in her young career here. 32 versus Arkansas. Another slip to the basket, and this time Ted Wyatt knocks it in. They're bringing Stady out high, then they're beating her to the rim with their quickness. The Kentucky Bigs can't match her, her strength, but they've got her in quickness, and they're using it against her. Well, that's a great observation. There you see the little slip screen, and she just slides right down the lane and lays it up and in. Beautiful little give and go. Now you want to see if Joni Taylor counters, which could open up some lanes for Ryan Allen. Well, it's, it's it's tough. Obviously, offensively, she's very good, but the question is defensively, who who covers Howard? And so far, it's been Chapman. And you know that whoever checks her, or at least tries to check Ryan Howard, it's going to cost them on the offensive end. And the other side of that, as you just pointed out, the Kentucky Bigs are too quick for Stady. Get her up high and head down low. Boy, Kentucky's defense extended all the way out past the hash. This defense so far. Now here comes the double team. But again, under pressure, they're able to get it away. Pascal is quick hands and off the ball, out of bounds. 
so it'll be Kentucky's ball with a turnover. Textbook Kentucky defense. You mentioned a double team, and when you mix in the sideline, Jeff, it's a triple team. Howard's open. Makes it look so easy, doesn't she? Doesn't she? She is such a smooth shooter. They try to beat Kentucky down court, and they do. Caldwell with yet another layup. Hear somebody in the crowd yell, get back. <laughs> good idea. Six points for Caldwell early in this game. Pace is good for the Wildcats. You don't like the turnover there. Now take a look at Ryan Howard. When she gets it, yeah, you've seen her on your yeah. Just a sliver of daylight. Flick of the wrist, three points. You see that heavily bandaged left hand? She had to miss three games when she fractured that pinky. Wildcats won two of them. Yeah. And the third, the only loss, they blew a double digit lead, so they gained some confidence. Learning to win without her, of course, they run uh, out. That was a game at home versus Florida. Yeah. Lost by eight after having, if you said that, huge lead. It's a good block, but from behind, the call is made. Kind of reached in, and I think if the hands go up straight, that's one thing. But reaching over the back, well, Haynes had a, a handful of Georgia Bulldog there, but got away with it. You're gonna miss her toughness. Yes, they are. So the Haitian sensation, <laughs> Stephanie Paul. Nine, she's senior. one of nine yes, siblings. Like that. Ooh, Blair Green had a thought from three, kicks it over to Haynes. She'll fire a three and knocks it down. That was a cause of major concern for the Georgia Bulldogs coming in. The Wildcats have nine triples a game. And right now, Jeff, this is track meet time. This is the kind of pace the Wildcats want. Green, Chastity, these girls now have finally got comfortable in their roles. Just in time. Yep. With a tournament a week, a little more than a week away. Great defense. Inside, and that Wyatt's able to run that one down. Kept their hands high, moved their feet. Not easy. Shania Jones into the game. And she's up on Patterson now. This is a really good battle right here between those two point guards now, Pascal. With the left hand, but it's no help there. Nice defense. Jones stops it, pops from 10, and knocks it down. Well, Pascal essentially threw into double coverage there. Yes, she did. Got to know where you are and what you're doing. Wide open. Wyatt's going to drive. Baseline kicks it over to Green. Again, nice passy, but good defense. Good help defense by Georgia inside a minute to play. That's one of those shots that where you got to, do I use the back there? Do I try to make it? And, Four or five feet, those are tough ones. Yep, that's yeah. smaller guards. No man's yeah. Look who's well, leading the break. They, you know, said that before. She's the first one down, and they reward her. And a big run here at the end of the quarter by Georgia is brought to a five-point game. But again, Georgia playing Kentucky's pace. I'm really curious to see if the Bulldogs will, will be able to slow this down a little bit. Blair Green misses. They're going to call Patterson for the foul. Go, she Red. tries to go up and get that. Red ball right here. Watch Georgia get out on the break here, Jeff. Caught the Wildcats sleeping a little bit. Perfect feed. Jenna State. So Kentucky, some full court to try to run some clock because we're already down to seven seconds. Paul's got to do something with it. Stady will fire the three, and she knocks it down. And that is a huge bucket to end the first quarter on a big run. Wow. 7-0 run for Georgia over the final 155, and that's cut it to two. Well, you mentioned Georgia playing its best right now, winning three of the last four. 
You know, Stady's got five straight double double figures. She's she's more than halfway there right now. I'll tell you what, the one thing Georgia does, they are really good on ball defenders as Ryan Howard comes over the top and knocks down another three. Great wow. way to open the quarter. It's right over Caldwell. Unbelievable. Tremendous defense. Again, hands up, feet moving, doesn't bump her extensively, and basically forced her out of bounds. As Mallory Bates just into the game. Here's Howard, another three, and she drills it again. Back to back threes. A little back screen, little pop out, little daylight, three more. Out front, spins over, fires too hard. Nice tip back there. How about that? Ryan Howard knocks that pass into the air, off the backboard, and into the bucket. That gets no credit. Andy <laughs> Galibo with a little slip, and another easy bucket for her. Alcats getting it done on the low post today. But again, good movement by the Kentucky Bears. Boy, how about that three thrown up and knocked down by Shania Jones? Transferred from Virginia Tech this season last year. Roper goes right to the basket and gets rejected, but she kicks it out the hands. Kentucky's on fire for being on the earth. Talk about some confidence. That young lady right there, Shania Jones, has got it, man. She just stepped back and fired that up. They back to back really double figure game. Yep. Yep. Really good defenders, but they leave Haynes open again. The Kentucky's got nine threes in 13 minutes. That's what they average per game. Nine made threes. Tony Taylor told us earlier today that was. The biggest concern on offense for Kentucky. A oh, great play by Andy Galibo to step in the passing lane and take it away. You know, Dick, you make one three and it gives you a little confidance, but and everybody's hit now. Here's Andy Oh, Andy Galibo had a chance for about six feet, but kicked it back out. Ten on the shot clock with seven to play here in the half. There's Roper, she'll try a three. And she's fouled as she threw it up by Jones, and she'll get three free throws. Right in front of the Georgia bench, and if looks could kill, Johnny Taylor being in jail right now. But watch Sabrina Haynes just calmly from beyond there. Didn't rush it, great form. And then did it again from the straightaway spot. You know, she gets in trouble, Jeff, when she, like most shooters, when she rushes her shot. But you can almost tell immediately when she sets her feet, as Raftery likes to say, organizes the puppies. Right then, you know she's got a great chance at hitting that shot. You're going to miss those rain-making shots by Jada Roper, aren't you? Yes, you are. 74% uh, free throw shooters knocked down the first two. She has one more. She makes it, will give Kentucky their biggest lead. And she does. Georgia made that late run against some of the Kentucky substitutes. Starters back in and extending the lead again. Well, Joni Taylor is using everybody off her bench today. Pose picked up her dribble, and she's in trouble, and it's taken away by Ryan Howard. You could see the panic in her eyes. Yep, you could all the way over here. Boy, the whole crowd here was waiting for that one to go down by Howard, weren't they? I was too. Who hose spots Hello. Sadie again, an easy basket. I'm not sure why this keeps catching Kentucky's bigs by surprise. <laughs> Maybe it's because they, they never see a player with that kind of size leading the break. The 
Jackie playing a little weave on the outside. Serena Haynes, and that ball was tipped out of bounds. It goes. It will stay Kentucky's ball. Yeah. Sabrina Tall. Watch Stady again. Breaking down the lane, and Kentucky players kind of walking after her. Again, she's got to get down there and beat her to the point. Four on the shot clock. Three, two, and Haynes tries to reach in and shoot. And they're going to call a foul. She had no idea how much time was left on the shot clock there until they yelled at her and yep. said, you got to shoot. You thought she might have an Emmanuel quickly moment. <laughs> Bank one in, but she got hammered by Caitlin Hose. You just can't have that. No, you? that's With another bailout. That's a second half bailout. A second left on the clock. Yeah. And you know, Hose has struggled a bit. She started the first nine or ten games yep. and has been coming off the bench of late. <laughs> Her team in high school was pretty good. She went to Hazel Green in Alabama. Now. In four years, they're 129 and 12. They won one state title. They lost three by a combined five points. You talk about anguish. <laughs> but she won when she was a senior. Yes. That's not going to make you forget the other three, but you're going to feel a lot better. Three of your 12 oh. losses <laughs> at the high school in the state championship game. Wow. Well, that ball just not going in, knocked out of bounds there oh. by oh. Kayla Hubbard. So it'll be Kentucky basketball. Makes me think of our friend Cameron Mills, a former Wildcat who played at Dunbar, made the championship game back to back. Could not pull it out. Great Dunbar teams. Jana Roper drives in. And even her layups have some arches. <laughs> Well, when you're as small as she is, yeah. or diminutive, whatever you want to say, you got to put some arch on the ball. Yeah. And she is not afraid to drive. No. She doesn't care. No, she's strong. She's fearless. She's experienced and knows how to play to contact. And now she finds herself back on the line. And that was Gabby Connolly there that got it with the body. This senior bunch, as you know, Jeff, has won a lot of basketball games for Matthew Mitchell. They got a lot of, you mentioned the talent sitting out, the talent coming back, but it's going to be tough next year for this team to find itself after these seniors are gone. Again, inside they go to Sadie. She steadies herself, but shot too hard, and that's going to be a foul, I think, on Howard on the inside, and that's going to be two on her. Yep. She may become a spectator. Yes, she will. Amanda Pasco off the bench. You know, in that situation, if you get it that low with Stady, you're thinking, okay, this is a bucket. And when she missed, it kind of caught everybody off guard. They had over, over pursued it or, or get too close to the basket, went over their heads, and she found trying to go back. Yeah, and Howard was fighting for the basketball. She wasn't trying for the block, and that's why she got in her space and was called for the foul. That was a good call. Yep. 73% free throw shooter makes one of two as Hubbard. So Coach Taylor has used 10 players, five stars and five off of her bench. I was just about to say game. now, Kentucky's got to protect this lead with Howard on the bench and the Mississippi State. They wouldn't have to play South Carolina if they get to the three seed until the championship game. That would be huge. That Mississippi State upset, and it was here at home, but still an upset. Crucial. Yep. And Vandy still struggling right now. Yep. 13 and 14 on the year, so you got to think Kentucky will be favored down in Nashville. And there she is again. Oh, nice shot. Wow. Doesn't, doesn't look, Jeff, like someone who really didn't play all that much or all that effectively her first two years. You know, sometimes it takes a while. We, it's Pascal five, and then she drops a three ball. Man. You know, sometimes it takes a minute for the light to come on. We talk about that on our football broadcast all the time. Any sport, really. Yeah. Game's got to slow down for you. And you never know when that's going to happen as a player or as a coach with these players. Hubbard all the way to the basket with the left hand up and in. You've got to cut the ball off. And I watch it, Pascal, the lefty hit that shot. You think about the lefties who 
played in this building. Jack Givens, Kevin Grevy, Tom Parker. Tatiana White, a righty, gets that one. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one of the Kentucky women's players, a shooter who was a great shooter who was a lefty, and I'm coming up blank. Callaway hits another three, so she is now two of two from beyond the arc, giving her six points on the night. Wildcats not as effective with that on-ball pressure right now. I'm trying, was Leslie Nichols left-handed? Might have been. Long shot again, another foul by Hubbard on Pascal. That's the third time a three-point shot has been a foul, and they're going to get three free throws. And you might have seen Joni Taylor at the top of her center screen holding her head. I think they're only going to give her two on this, but still. Yep. Not a great shot by Pascal, but now she has a chance to extend this lead. So now Nene Cole comes into the game. One of the transfer seniors that has had some problems with that left knee but gives him some great size on the inside to try to battle with Stady. She's really active when she's healthy. And as you said, gives Kentucky good minutes off the bench trying to battle against the Georgia big. Stady already with 11, so another double figure game for her. Look at Blair Green there. Blair Green, nice, Jesse Patterson. Some three that was all the way in and out. That ball comes right. Oh, it's over and back. It's over. And back. Matthew Mitchell certainly thought it was trying to help the officials. Well, inside Sadie, and they're going to call that one on Nene. Another great entry pass. Stady at 6-4, Jeff, with good hands. All you got to do is put it up there over the Kentucky defense. She'll go get it. But as you mentioned, Nene coming in, trying to help out a little bit. A little too much contact that they battled. Boy, Sadie just has a really nice shot. Great touch. She was a champion swimmer in high school. She's had a state championship in the backstroke. Took up basketball as a high school freshman and then started to get serious about it. Well, he's thought about it, but she'll pull it back out. The two and a half mark, there's a big screen. Right for the free throw line, and she knocks it down. Big shot for Kentucky. Stop the bleeding a little bit. That's a veteran knowing how to use a screen. Ran her defender into the contact and shook herself loose. Isaacs with the ball in the high post here. She go left-handed down the lane and puts it in over Blair Green. Nice play. Stady vacated the low post. That opened up the paint for her teammate. And this is a very long squad that Georgia has in right now. Three that are well over 6-1. Call Nene inside offensively with the foul. And trying to establish in the low post, and she's going to head for the bench. Two fouls. Sonia Galibo back in the game for Kentucky. Kentucky employs that full court press. Jones will give it up to Connolly, but boy, I tell you what, I like Jones's handle. It's amazing. One field goal separates these two teams. Three pointers and free throws are the difference. Paul will drive down the lane, puts her shoulder down, and badly misses. Here comes Kentucky, 3-2 break. Pascal, the leader, kicks it off to Haynes. Three on the way, no good. Got to step into it, Jeff, just a little too rushed. Comes Jones quickly down. She'll go to the corner. 
Back to Connolly for the three, and she knocks it down. Extra pass pays off for Georgia, and right now, once again, the Bulldogs outrunning the Kentucky defensive pressure. It's a good game plan. It's a single-digit lead now for the Cats. So Georgia has whittled away again towards the end of the quarter. Ryan Howard on the bench, two fouls. Scout tried to go with the crossover. Patterson just goes around Jones. And the teardrop is no good. Rebounded by Paul inside. Here they come, running again. 40 seconds left. Stady gets the foul call on Anya Galibo. Hard luck call on Anya Galibo. Really, you could argue Stady initiated the contact, but wisely drew the foul. Jody Taylor getting some good play out of the bigs. And out of her team on the fast break, again, the extra pass. Connolly set, didn't rush the shot. And the Bulldogs have clawed their way back into this. Chapman back in the game for Georgia. Sadie back at the free throw line for two more. Boy, she barely touches the net. Game really turned around when Ryan Howard left with a couple of fouls. 14 now for Sadie in the first half. 15. Joni Taylor said there's no bigger fan in this building of Ryan Howard than she is. She was on the USA staff and got the coach, Ryan Howard, said whenever we're not playing. 18 at AM, 18 against Alabama, 19 at Florida, and 24 versus Missouri. But the Georgia's coach, Joni Taylor, told us that the lights for this team are coming on. You mentioned one of the yeah. players. That's why they're playing their best basketball right now. Boy, beautiful pass inside, and Anya Galibo is able to put it in. Boy, Anya Galibo's had a great first half shooting-wise. Wildcats spread the floor, created some space for Anya Galibo. Boy, what a great Clutch. shot there by Jones. She was able to hit the brakes, let him go by her, and then put it in. Clutch shot, Georgia climbs back in. Wildcats had a big lead. Lost their start of fouls, but watch the pass here. Well, actually, Haynes fighting off the contact, and then Georgia, very calmly. Compromised shooting the ball. They are not a great offensive team. Georgia turned it over early and then settled down offensively. Kentucky's forced 17 of 26 opponents into 20 turnovers or more. That is not a turnover because it's tipped. But Georgia cleaned up its game, Jeff, and, and really was playing with more confidence on offense, especially with Howard on the bench. Five turnovers for Georgia, four turnovers for Kentucky. It's been the shooting, and there's a steal by Roper. She gets in the passing lane, goes in with the left hand, but she is fouled there by Chloe Chapman. You mentioned Chapman at the top of the broadcast, a great athlete. <laughs> she was named to the SEC All-Freshman team for soccer. You can watch her get out. Joni Taylor says her, her Strength is speed. Now, she didn't come to the ball there, but watch her try to make up for it. Drew the foul, but she led Georgia in scoring this past year with six and played nothing but soccer until the soccer season was over. She didn't bounce back and forth, didn't have to split the 20 hours. So she was a little bit slow, of course, to catch up. And then when Hugh Morrison went out. That was just about when she was coming around. So you hate to lose a player, but it happened at an opportune time with her coming back. But what a loss Q Morrison oh. was for this team. She tore a labrum and had shoulder surgery two weeks or a week and a half ago. And uh, she is obviously out the remainder of the season. We wish her well and her recovery. And hopefully she's able to come back because she was quite the player. 7.7 7 points, four and a half rebounds a game for the juniors. So. Ryan Howard making her presence felt immediately, as you might expect. She is just so smooth. Look at that step back three pointer, and that's going to be short. But boy, when she gets in a roll, forget about it. There's nobody better, maybe in the country. Wide open three for Caldwell. That's the first miss from beyond the arc for the Bulldogs. Keeping that ball alive was Paul. And Conley's got such a sweet take, but she misses there a little hard. Haynes gets it off the rope, and here come the Cats running. And Ryan Howard, so smooth. Anya Galibo, 15-footer, is just off the back iron. 
And they come right back again. Stop and pop, and that's a little long. Ball saved in the middle by Chapman, and Kentucky comes away with it. But once again, early offense for Georgia trying to beat that Kentucky defense. They don't want to go against that half-court Kentucky pressure. Sloppy here, shooting-wise now to start the second half. Both teams with misses. Ryan Howard with that left hand heavily bandaged goes into the paint and they're going to call her for the charge. Nice move there defensively by Stephanie Paul to draw the charge and that's three fouls now on Ryan Howard. And she was able to set up just outside the half circle. <laughs> now Ryan Howard back to the bench. Mm, Critical to time that, in yeah. this game. Man, that was close. She can't run. That's a walk. That Second not, turnover in the half. Good call, Mr. Pecora. That way you can't, uh, only on a missed or yeah. made basket can you run the inbound line. Can't and run the baseline. Paul took off on that one and moved your pivot foot, so that's a walk. Got to take advantage. Now someone has to step up for the Cats, and who can that be? Tatiana Wyatt into the game. She misses her first shot attempt. If Kentucky's going to win this game, I know the Wildcats are up nine, but especially with Howard and the match, Jeff, defense has to get a lot sharper. And Matthew Mitchell's all about defense, as we know. But right now, it looks like they've kind of been seduced into playing this track meet style, which is fun. But if you don't hit your shots and don't stop the other guys, you're going to be in trouble. Nice play there by Tatiana Wyatt as she fronts Sadie and knocks that one out of bounds. Howard has 12 points, but three fouls, so she'll sit for a while. Depending on how Georgia responds is how long she'll be on the bench. Wow. Boy, Caldwell Hatch, she get that one up in the <laughs> Angles. And really under the back. Yes. And they've got it back out. Now they've got it down to seven. Kicks it back to McKinney. That ball is a little hard. Three-pointers not falling. Good defense by Amanda Pasco. Here goes the defense by Pasco. Stop and pop is hard there by Chapman. And here comes Kentucky running. it over to Haynes. She was hot in the first half and misses there. That's going to be called on the floor on the rebound. I think it's going to be Paul with the foul. It is. And Wyatt did a great job establishing position under the basket. Paul threw a hip into her and put her on the floor. Look at the contact under here. They battle. Javen Nicholson in the game now. Cats need freshman. some offense. Yep, they do. Oh, the lefty and Roper tried to go with the right hand and flipped it up, and she is fouled. How about manufacture some offense and get to the free throw line? Not a bad thought. Jordan Isaacs with the foul. We saw her quite a bit in the first half. Speaking of lefties, I mentioned Amanda Pasco, mm -hmm. the left-hander, and our buddy Deal Price who was the longtime voice, radio voice of UK women's basketball, texted me and reminded me, and I thought this was the case, but I could not remember, Sarah Potts, the great Sarah Potts. She could hit from the outside, Oh, my goodness. She? First Kentucky player ever to amass 200 or more three-pointers. As Neil said, she was open when she got off the bus. <laughs> she really was. So this is Conley jogging the ball into the forecourt. Called well with Pascal on her. Hit that jumper, and that's no good. Good block out. They're going to call Pascal there. Foul on the I have to admit, I didn't see that. I did not either. So, I'll guarantee our cameras found it. There it is. Yeah, a little push there. <laughs> I was wondering why they were. Nothing but white jerseys under the basket. 
Jordan Isaacs was moved yeah, out of the way. He cleared house, Amanda Paskin. Well, Nicholson, another with a great body to play in the inside, man. And there she is with the entry pass, but it's knocked away and off of her out of bounds. Just a freshman. In case you're wondering, Stady on the bench right now. I'll tell you what, you put her and Stady in there together. I'm not driving to the basket. <laughs> you're always an outside shooter anyway. Got that right. I don't like elbows and hips. <laughs> I've only got one hip anyway, so I like to keep the you other have one. Two there. ones bionic. <laughs> Boy, nice getting in the passing lanes by Isaacs, taking that one away. Patterson now in the game for Kentucky. Now they go inside to Nicholson. She kicks it back out. In and out offense. Isaac's a lot of promise. She was rated one of the top 15 power forwards in the country coming out of high school. And a good get for Georgia. Okay. And as you mentioned, adds size and bulk yep. down there. It does. Coast. Really does. They've got a uh, they've got a team that's got great length. Yep. Two true centers, which a lot of teams don't have anymore. And I think that's really bothered Kentucky's half offense without Ryan Howard. Trying to create space and drive, as you can see, but nothing doing. Patterson stops and pops a little short. Ball knocked around. McKinney with the rebound. She's too hard. Gets her own miss and puts it back up and in. What did she battle? And so wisely, Jeff went up quickly with that second shot. Big bucket. Nicholson and Caldwell playing a little two-man game. In and out they go, back inside to Nicholson, and she'll draw the foul on Tatiana Wyatt. Boy, this is a team that loves to start the offense and go inside out. And it's working. Wildcats up 11, media timeout. Matthew Mitchell's going to talk to his team about how do you stop those entry passes to the low post. For A&M in the third quarter, a 48-31 to 31 lead. That's big for Kentucky. Ooh. Alabama can hang on. That would put Texas A&M at 10 and 5. And if Kentucky hangs on, they would be 10 and 5. So A&M is one of the teams that Kentucky needs to lose. That Arkansas game against Mississippi State is just getting underway. Actually starts at 9 Eastern, 9 Eastern 8 Central. Yeah. Inside to Nene. She turns around just a little short, but kept alive by McKinney. And they're going to call a foul. Call that one. That Isaacs again. How about a rebound Isaacs. foul 12 feet from the basket? Yeah. That's some hustle by Chastity Patterson. Not sure about that shot from Nene. She was open, but just got off the bench. <laughs> Never stopped Chuck Person. Boy, <laughs> Patterson with the <laughs> beautiful <laughs> rock to the basket as she lays it up and in. Once again, Kentucky clears out, creates a pass. She's so quick. That gets her off the schneid. She had a tough night, 0 for 4, and she finally hits that shot to her first two points of the game. Remember, she's one of those that we can ask to score. Oh, my goodness. They I wondered if they would catch her wow. for a little bit of contact, maybe with that offhand. We may get a look at it. Looked like a perfect defensive play. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Kentucky trying to front these bigs now. They yep. have to try to blunt some of these passes going to the inside. But one of the girls, you know, I was asking who picks up the scoring when Ryan is on the bench. Chastity's one of those. She had 32 against Arkansas. So you know she can score. Pass was another one. Roper's another one. Haynes, they've got the ability. Haynes now tonight is 13. Returns. Sorry, the big gun returns for yep. Georgia. Jenna Stady's back. I wonder if they'll go to her immediately. What do you think? <laughs> well, with the three fouls now on Nene, I would. Oh, yeah. Patterson steps back, and it's just a little too hard on that three. Might look good from here, right on line. Jones quickly gets it down court. Wildcats 0 for 4 from distance. Now Jones was thinking Caldwell was going to come out. Caldwell made a move to the basket, and that ball just goes out of bounds. Would you call that an unforced error? Because yes. Roper was like all tennis. over. Yeah. But Roper was all over. Yeah, I'm wondering. She got a little quick. Yeah. 
So Blair Green checks into the game. She hit her first shot when she came right off the bat from three. So she's got three points in the game, one of two shooting. Blair was such a prolific scorer in high school. Haynes with a nice pass inside, just a tad too yeah. high off the fingertips of Cole. Yeah. I'm going to say it was last touched by Isaacs out of bounds. This Kentucky team averages 74 a game here in the Coliseum this year. Hey, there she goes. Oh, it was so good in the first half. And it's up to the third quarter so far. Okay. Well on their way to that average. The Georgia team has held Arkansas a prolific scoring team to 55. Yeah. Arkansas, as you know, put up more than 100 on the Wildcats. Well, that's just a nice play there. She sets her feet. And Haynes can't get off hers as Caldwell's able to lay it up and in. She's been a nice player. 50, uh, 12 points for her on the night. Ticked out of bounds as Patterson was trying to get to the corner for a three ball. Good piece of officiating there. It looked like the ball would go to Georgia, but the officials got together on it. So Pascal now in the game as Haynes will get a quick breather with 2.48 to play here in the third quarter. And Blair Green knocks down the 14 footer. And now off the made basket, Georgia with a fast break, essentially. Boy, nice rebound by Isaac. She gathers herself and puts it right up and in off the glass. Well, this is a team that at times has had a tough time scoring, but not tonight. 54 points already by this Georgia team. Well, the pace is in Georgia's favor, but the Wildcats obviously have double digits. But Ryan Howard on the bench, and reminder, Georgia finished strong at the end of the first and second quarters. Jones three on the way and she knocks it down. Big, big bucket for Georgia and that cuts the lead to eight. Every time Kentucky hits, they come right back at him and Kentucky's got an eight point lead. Bulldogs shake loose, not much defense. Dogs in one of my favorite cities, Greenville, South Carolina. You're such a world traveler. Small world, Jeff, and it's yours. I'm just living here. Now, Greenville, there's a Greenville South and North, isn't there? Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, Are they close to the North? To Do not know. So, Ryan Howard stays on the bench for the Wildcats with those three fouls inside of two minutes. And this is where Georgia has made their run in the first couple of quarters. And can they do it again? Bear, Blair Green battling for the rebound. Out of bounds it goes. And she and Anya, Anya Galibo, the tallest Wildcats out there. In case you're wondering, Howard went to the bench with only 12 points. She's only played about 14 minutes yeah. tonight. Well, the crowd reacted to two things, Jeff. They thought she took an extra step or two as she drew the foul. She also put that front elbow out there. And I thought she might be called for hooking. Oh, my. Yeah, she did. You're exactly right. And no surprise, no secret to what George is going to do, especially with Howard Sideline. Whether she's in, now she's coming back. And it was Stady out. That lead went back to 11. She returns. It's a ball game. Big trip here for the Wildcats. Open. Amanda Pascal from three. In and out. But Patterson with the rebound. The smallest Wildcats able to run that one down. Wildcats still have not scored from downtown tonight in the second half. Pascal try another long range shot. That went off the mark. Ball knocked around and. Isaac saves it to host, and now it's Jones with the ball. It's a cardinal rule against that in basketball, but they survived it. Sadie misses, and Blair Green big inside with the defense and the rebound. Now Roper pulls it back out inside a minute to play. 
goes around Sadie. Sadie reaches out and just touches her, and she's called for the foul. You know, we talked earlier, Jeff, about can these teams execute when they're tired? That's a tired foul right there. Yep. She really didn't need to reach out. She wasn't going to take the ball away. So that's only two on Stady. Yeah, but five fouls, so Kentucky yep. in the bonus. So, Roper, remember, in the women's game, five fouls in a quarter, you go to the free throw line. Roper makes it. Why the men very good. don't go to the quarters right. is beyond me. This it is, is great. It is the only Division I men's basketball that's the only one. Grade school, high school, all levels of college, except Division I, play quarters. And knocks it both down. And the pros play the quarters. Yep. <laughs> so about a 10-second difference, the shot clock and the game clock. So Kentucky will get the ball back with this nine-point lead. And Howard back in the game, as is Sabrina Haynes. So Kentucky gets two of their better scores in the game. And Sadie just too big in there. She's Nothing. able to drop it in. Nothing you can do about that. So Kentucky will walk it up and hold the ball for the last shot. Ryan Howard has it out here near midcourt. Howard being guarded by Kayla Hubbard. Loosely. <laughs> Fourth defender to try to check her tonight. But look at it, step back, and a three misses. Boy, Howard is just so cool and collective out there. And she just stepped back and the three wouldn't fall. So the Cats are going to the fourth. They've got a six. Just glad to be a part of the big dance. Howard, Patterson, Haynes, Blair Green, and Anya Galibo on the floor for the Wildcats. Good pass inside. Patterson loses it. That's going to be a jump ball. They'll go to Georgia. Kind of an interchange offense there with Patterson yes. alone in the low post, the smallest player on the floor. Good entry pass, but Georgia did a good job tying things up and retains possession on the held ball, so the Wildcats will get the next one. That could be big down the stretch. Sadie Caldwell hose Hubbard, and Conley on the floor for Georgia. This is Caldwell, who was very good early. Kayla goes right down the lane, and boy, that's a tough one there, but she gets her own rebound and puts it back up and in. Kayla Hubbard. Hubbard's hit some key buckets for this Georgia team. Beautiful slip pass, and a layup again for Anya Galibo. Give her 10 on the night. Hubbard was checking power. She really couldn't rotate over and leave that dangerous player alone. Boy, 10 points for Anya Galibo on her senior night, and none bigger. Man, big 10 points from her tonight. That jumper again, good by Caldwell. Georgia has not shot the ball well all season long. 40% from the field, but tonight they are wearing it out, almost 50%. Power gets the rebound, slides back out, and pops in a 10-foot jump. Georgia's had so many inside looks tonight, Jeff, against this Kentucky team that's not long on length, if you will. And the Dogs have done a nice job with the Kentucky defensive pressure. They're just taking care of the basketball. Go back to Sadie inside. She tries to go baseline, and she walked. Looked right. like she didn't know she was going to shoot or dribble one more time. I say that, and there comes the turnover. And she'll take the seat. Now Bates comes in for her. Now 11 turnovers yep, for the Dogs. She knew it. Kentucky 15 points off turnovers, well below its average. Roper walks it up for the Cats. Keen McKinney back in the game for the Wildcats as well. Haynes pulls it back out with 10 on the shot clock. Boy, Hose just steps in and takes it away from her. They call a jump ball. Yep. So it will stay with Kentucky. Kentucky scores 32% of its offense 
from turnovers. Not the case tonight, thanks to Georgia's ability to handle that pressure. So Kentucky trying to find other ways in the half court to score, especially with this young lady on the bench. But now Ryan Howard creating some offense. And she has to be careful on those drives, too, Dick, because she has three fouls. So. That and if you're Matthew Mitchell, your heart's got to be in your mouth when she goes to the floor with that left hand. 80% free throw shooter. She just glides into the basket. But they knocked her off balance, and you saw there on that replay, the first thing that hit the floor was her left hand. Boy, important free throws here. Wildcat baseball team lost a player probably for the rest of the year, Cam Hill, the wrist, in a collision. Right? Yeah, and, he, and the first thing he did was put his wrist down to brace himself, and it was at a weird angle and ended up breaking it. So Kentucky's lead is now nine. With seven and a half to go in the game. And the defense step up for the Cats. Caldwell. Goes right by two defenders and puts it in. She is such a spark plug for this Georgia team. Got a great crossover, gets inside. Gets 16 points is called Will. Delivo gives it off to Roper. Clock inside at 10. McKinney, jumper, no good, a little hard. Players sprawling everywhere, and here comes Georgia. Boy, at three, looked good by Connolly, but hits the front end, rim, and back rim, and out it goes. Roper running the other way. Howard's had a hard time finding a rhythm tonight with those she fouls. Has. Step back jumper, and that stays in, and the shooters roll there. Again, it just seems like every time they meet a big basket, she's got the yep. ball in her hands. It's what all Americans do. Yep. And then she plays defense. <laughs> but she shook her head as she backed away like that could have been four. Boy, they lose the ball inside, and Kentucky picks it up, and a foul on the interior that's going to be called on Bates. Just a tough break for Georgia. Wildcats with quick hands, and as you said, a bonus. A turnover and then a foul. And watch Howard get the shooter's roll. Howard now up to 18 points. She leads all score. Well, she's actually tied with Sadie with 18. Caldwell's going to get a rest. She's earned it. She had a nice game so far for Caldwell. Still shooting 49% is Georgia. Kentucky at 43%. Hubbard marking Ryan Howard again. They're going to switch yep. every time. Also, the Cats have cooled off from the three-point line. Have not hit a three in the second half. They call that a reach-in. Yeah, and a break for Kentucky. You've got a big putting the ball on the floor in the paint, but getting away with it. In fact, as you said, drawing a foul. So Kentucky, who was 10 of 18 in the first half from beyond the arc, 0 for 6 here in the second. Yeah, right off the knee. Howard, a little wraparound pass. Oh. And Tatiana cannot finish at the rim. Nor can Jones. And now we go back the other way. Roper sprinting up the court. Well, this just back and forth basketball right here. How nice about the defense. defense by Howard? Oh, and it's caught out of bounds. So that'll be Kentucky basketball. You know, at halftime, Jeff Danzler, the radio voice of the Georgia women's basketball program, walked by me and he said, this is like Blazers Nuggets in the 80s. <laughs> yes, it really is. That's a heads up play right there by Haynes. So Cooks Taylor asks something of the referees, and now they're going to go down and talk at the scorer's table. I think that was about the play. I think, I think she foul. was wondering 
Yeah, the, the possession before yeah. when the ball went out of bounds, was it just off the leg or was it a foul? Gotcha. I thought it was a foul. I did too. Well, no Harper using her bulk to keep Howard off balance. Well, if you go to the floor with the ball, that's supposed to be a foul, but none called there. And well, the crowd wanted a wash. That's what I mean. It's a oh, I thought yeah. you said foul. Oh, I, I meant I meant a travel. There's a foul. Yeah, I said a, I said a foul. I meant a travel. Yeah. If, if you have possession of the ball, go to the floor. If you're juggling the ball, you don't have possession and go to the floor. It is not a wall. Right. So immediate timeout with 4:41 to play and a. We've asked all season long if. Ryan Howard has an off night or has foul trouble. Who picks up for her? Everybody. We've seen it tonight. Everyone has. Howard has had foul trouble. She's got 18, and she's got a drive to the basket and an easy layup. Give her 20. It's amazing how both teams have been able to find their way to the rim tonight. Fallon. On Wyatt. A little too much with the hip. There's not a lot you can do when you're giving away that kind of size, length, bulk, strength. Kentucky 20 points in the paint tonight, 26 for Georgia. You got to hope for help from your teammates yes. to make that pass a lot more challenging. You would think. Caldwell's jumper's no good. Ball tipped around, still tipped around. Sadie comes down with it. Jump ball up. They're going to call another foul on Wyatt. Wow. I guess she reached in. We'll take another look. They're going to call that actually on Sabrina Haynes. Yeah, they chopped her in the arms. Last thing you want to do is give Georgia a chance to score with the clock stopped. First foul on Haynes. So four minutes to play, and Kentucky's lead is nine. Can they hold off this Georgia Bulldog? All you can say is offensive explosion. Dogs had it down to five a couple they times. Howard finds McKinney. Well on the shot clock. Here's the double team. Open three. And Kiki McKinney hits a enormous shot. How about the pass? A wraparound pass. And a steal by Haynes. She gets it ahead to Howard. She'll keep it in her left. Lays it in. And one. Great pass by Haynes ahead to Howard, and she's able to put it in. Hauls it in with the left, goes up with the left, and a lot of the right, and drops it through at a crucial point in this game. And there's the beautiful assist she got. Great defense. That started with great yeah. defense. And just like that, Kentucky has a 15-point lead. Gabby Conley called for the foul. A three-pointer and a three-point play. Wow. That was the juncture in this game. You have to look back oh. and go, wow. And Caldwell bangs one in. Pascal quickly up the court. Caldwell now trying to guard Ryan Howard. Inside a three to play. She is marking the All-American. Oh, almost had it again. <laughs> How she got that up there. Wow. Sadie was behind the defender Caldwell as well. You watched her all year play into contact. And so strong, usually able to finish that play. Caldwell's mom, Patricia Walker, an All-American at UNC Charlotte. So comes by her talent, honestly. 
You know, Dick, a lot of players, and this is both men and women, shy away from contact. They don't like to get knocked around. Does it bother her one bit? She it's kind of like Jerome Bettis in the fact that she enjoys the contact. Jerome Bettis, well, I, I would see, never know, have gone at, there. She goes at <laughs> the defenders. She's the one that is delivering the blow on those plays. Wow. Quite the metaphor by Jeff Caporo on a Thursday. Well, he was a tank when he had the ball, and so is she. Yep. she it's just so athletic. She's able to move her body. Yeah. Actually, there's a, there was a simile if you're scoring at home. Nice takeaway there by Tatiana Wyatt. Big turnover there, 15th for the Bulldogs. McKinney goes right inside, and boy, big block there by Sadie. It's a tough challenge. McKinney just comes up smiling. Sadie open for the elbow, no good. Follows her own shot and hits the eight foot. Never brought the ball down either, Jeff. Just went right back up. Boy, Stady is just a score, you know? 22 points now. Stady Kentucky ball. Watch Stady again. She just follows her shot. She can hit that one. And then she goes in and finds one she can make. She's not quite been the factor in the second half that she was in the first. And now it's a 13 point game inside a buck 50. Open three for Sabrina Haynes. Can't hit it. Here comes Conley with it. Quickly up the court, all the way into the basket. But Pascal trailing. Deflects the ball as she goes to the corner to Caldwell. Secondary break, you look to the wings, but Pascal was there to take it away. And Pascal, so athletic. Just a gritty player on both ends of the floor. Isaacs and Hose back in the game. Drop it inside, knocked away. Kentucky's defense. Can they get the turnover? No, it's picked back up by Isaac. She goes in, blocked by Haynes. Oh, they're going to call the foul on her. It was Haynes who had rotated over and broke up the pass into the low post. And I guess just enough contact as she followed through on the block. Oh, good How be. quick was she off her feet? You be the judge. In and out. Jordan Isaacs. Grew up playing soccer, volleyball, some ballet. Four points and five rebounds tonight. Wildcats about to put this away on senior night. And make a move in the standings if they get some more help. Jada Roper's three. Yes. Go! One more. One more for the senior. Or another rainmaker. Give her 14 now on the night. And that is matched by Conley as she steps into a three. Gonna have to foul, I would assume, if you're Georgia. They don't want to foul Roper. A lot of room to make up in the last 45 seconds. Joni Taylor says, nope, just play defense. Matthew Mitchell calling time and to get some subs in. And they want to take the seniors out, I would assume, here. Zach, big hug by Haynes. And now Roper. Take one more look at Jada Roper's last three-pointer in Memorial Coliseum. Jeff, how many times have you seen this one? Sky ball. And it just drops right through. I remember the first time I saw her shoot that shot, and I thought, what in the, ooh, nice shot. <laughs> so Emma King in the game for the first time tonight. Nene also in there with Pasco, two seniors. They're gonna come out here momentarily. Gotta shoot. Now let's them stop the clock. And now the seniors come out, Pasco and Andy Galivo. Ryan Howard with a big hug for Pascal. And McKinney. 
Day Day. Standing ovation here at Memorial Coliseum on senior night. Conley hits that running one-hander. All they're going to do basically is get it across mid-court. Yeah. Start to sell. They'll have an 11-point win, but more importantly, they go to 10 and 5 in the standings and put a lot of pressure on Arkansas and Texas A&M. Now, Nick, interesting game. Kentucky had spurts. Georgia battled back. And boy, in the end, Kentucky hangs on and wins an 88-77. But I, just some fantastic three-point shooting early from Georgia kept them in the ball game. But the big number to me is the free throws. 20 for 21 for the Cats. No question. Georgia got to the line as well, but Kentucky took care of business. And it was that early blistering pace, 10 of 18, or rather... Uh, South Carolina, a share of the SEC regular season title is theirs. And it's because they can score in so many different ways. Age does not matter. They got the talent and skill and composure. Four players in double figures for the Gamecocks, led by Zaya Cook with 20 points, and they take down Kentucky. 